The Sundance Film Festival in beautiful Park City, Utah is underway. It's a 10-day festival. It continues to start back in 1978. A couple of our friends are there. They're joining us on the phone this afternoon. It's Lance McDaniel, Artistic Director with Dead Center, and Kim Haywood, Dead Center Director of Programming. Hey, guys. How's it going? Wonderful. How are you? Doing, doing well, doing well. I've been reading from Oklahoma City the reports of all the cool things happening out there at Sundance, and it seems like with everything in the media business, with film, with digital, there's a lot of change, whether it's how things are being made in a digital way or how they're being distributed, This, uh, you know, whether it's video or films. And I think you guys are seeing that out there as well. Absolutely. I, th I think that the biggest change that we've noticed and I think has been reported on nationally is that Netflix and Amazon, for the first time, are the biggest buyers at Sundance and not a traditional distributor like a Lionsgate or a Miramax. And so how that affects the overall industry is it means that a lot of studios would come in and pay $11 million for a big-name film, and they even if they couldn't recoup it in the box office, they could make that money once it goes online on, you know, when it goes to Cox On Demand or, or to Netflix or something like that. And with Netflix and Amazon coming in and buying the movies up so quickly, that cuts out that part of the profits for, for the um, studios, and so it makes it harder for them to pay top dollar for those kind of films. With the, with the ease of technology, with the ease of, uh, of cameras, if you will, is there a flood of films? Is it easier for filmmakers to get into this, uh, into the industry these days? I think it is easy. I think anyone on Earth can pick up their phone and make a movie. So it is absolutely correct in that the technology, when you had to buy a 16-millimeter camera, there was about five people in the state that could do it. And now that you can do it with any kind of technology, Everyone on earth can do that, but it's just like music. Anyone on earth can buy a guitar, but that doesn't make them a songwriter. And so I think with movies, what's great about a festival like ours and like Sundance is that you have curators that are looking at twelve to 13,000 films and saying, okay, here's a few hundred that we think are worth the stories that we think are being told um, or that, that are most important for you to hear or to see. And um, so the technology certainly opens up who gets to make it, but it doesn't really change the fact that, it, that there's a limited number of screens and a limited number of places to show your film. Kim, how many years have you guys been going out to Sundance, and how is this year different from previous trips? Uh, well, we've been at Sundance as our sixth year um, to come to Sundance. Um, and I think how it's different, uh, this has been a really kind of low-key year for us. Um, we've had a much better um, um, success rate of meeting lots of filmmakers and networking, which is one of the number one reasons why we come out here is to, to meet filmmakers and meet distributors and talk to, the, talk to them about Dead Center. Um, and also the films. You know, we, we will see about 20 films by the time that we're finished. Um, and we liked a lot of them. We didn't love a lot. So every year it's kind of it goes up and down in terms of what we're seeing. But I think by the end of, um, end of our trip, we'll probably about you know, four, five, six films that we really, really love that we'll start paying attention to, seeing what distributors pick those up, and then doing what we can to bring them to Dead Center this summer. Well, let's talk and, about um, that. What, and, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit, Lance. What is the goal of you guys actually being out there? Our goal at Sundance, we started coming in, um, you know, six years ago, and the reason we did is we never got Sundance movies. And, and we believe that by having the hope... Sundance gets the most high-profile movies, certainly in America and usually around the world. And we believe that if we came out here and started establishing relationships with distributors and filmmakers, we could bring bigger films back to Oklahoma. And in turn, what that does is it brings bigger audiences to see the films made in Oklahoma. And our goal is to make sure that our Oklahoma filmmakers and regional national filmmakers are given the best audience and the best exposure possible at Dead Center. And the way to do that was to bring in big-name films. And so last year, Best of Enemies was one of them. Um, Evil Knievel was one of them. The, um, the Overnight. And so we're looking for things that will draw a crowd, and then that crowd will stay and watch all the other films. That's our primary goal for being here. You guys are increasing the awareness of Oklahoma films and Oklahoma on the filmmaking circuit. How's the feedback changed over the years from when you first started going out there to where you guys walk out there now? They're like, yeah, there's Lance, there's Kim from Dead Center. They're from Oklahoma. It is definitely different. And I, and I will tell you, so that, so Tava Sofsky and the Oklahoma Film and Music Office also threw a party with Dunlap Cotting and the Tulsa Film Commission, um, and they've been doing that for a few years. 
And this year was so different because so many people came in, even though weren't invited because they heard Oklahoma Film was having a party, and they know that we have great rebates. They know that our legislature supports our thriving film industry, and they know that we're a super fun festival. So this was, I felt like, the first year that people were leaving other states' parties to come to ours. And we even had a group of 20-year-olds say, hey, I just heard this was the best party in town, so we showed up. And so I do think the reputation of Oklahoma has changed, and I certainly think us being here has helped that, but I think the fact that Oklahoma the city has evolved into this world-class city with arts and sports and everything else has certainly helped as well. Well, plus you guys are fun people to party with, right? We are the most fun people in Park City, yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of people in Park City, who have you seen? Any celebrities, any A-list people that, you know, name-dropping you want to put out there right now? Well, yes, and, and, and so one thing, well, yes, I will. And so, but, uh, but with one caveat that we go to industry screenings so we can see a ton of different film, which means that we're not going to the public screenings where the, where the famous people are. But that said, there's so many people in town. So we ate dinner right next to Elijah Wood. Um, I saw Christine Lottie on the street and actually chatted to her over coffee. Um, we saw Erica Badu last night in concert and then met the rapper Nas. And so there's always a flood of people around. And kind of every bar or every party you walk into has one or two people from each movie. Um, and so it's exciting. Kim, I understand you were interviewed by uh, NPR earlier today. Uh, what's their line of questioning? What's the storyline that NPR is looking at out there? Well, um, what they're interviewing me about, um, I was on a panel with some other regional film festivals, um, the Oxford uh, Film Festival in Mississippi, and also the Seattle International Film Festival, which is actually the biggest in the country. And it was just a little spotlight on um, regional film festivals and um, you know what we're doing in our individual cities, um, how we navigate Sundance and to get films and to get filmmakers, and just to kind of understand the broader scope of festivals and what's happening in festivals around the country. All right, guys, I'll get you out of here on this. Lance and then Kim, uh, what movies were your favorites so far? Well, let's start with Kim because she's the expert ahead of program. Right? <laughs> the expert. Um, well, I, I just literally walked in the door um, from a film called The Eagle Huntress, um, which is about a young girl in Mongolia who sort of defies this 2,000-year-old um, um, legacy to become um, an, an eagle huntress. It's, it's been male-dominated. She wants to hunt with eagles, and she, she did it. It's a really, really beautiful film. It's a part of Sundance's um, kids section, uh, which is very interesting. Um, we also saw an amazing film that was happened to be produced by an Oklahoman out of Moore named Blake Pickens. Uh, but the film was called The Land, and it was absolutely fantastic. It's about, about four boys um, growing up in um, urban Cleveland. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. The performances were fantastic. Um, and I also um, loved another narrative called Maggie's Plan, which had another Oklahoman in it, uh, Bill, Bill Hader. Uh, Bill Hader was in it. Uh, Greta Gerwig and Ethan Hawke were the leads. Um, and it was absolutely hilarious and charming as well. Yes, I, Maggie's Plan was my favorite. It was just a really enjoyable, um, really enjoyable movie. And then one that was much more intense that has stuck with me is one called Goat. And it is a hazing movie starring Nick Jonas. And it is the most intense movie I've seen here. Um, and it feels a lot like the Stanford Prison Experiment, which is a movie we played last year. And then probably the most, the most exciting film I saw was called Sky Ladder, The Art of Tai. It, it, I think it's Tai Guo Quang. And he is a Chinese artist that does the art of fireworks. And so he came to international prominence by doing the fireworks for the Beijing Olympics. But he not only does fireworks displays, he also creates paintings using fireworks, explosives to create the, the, um, the, to burn the canvases. And so that was absolutely spectacular. And we had shown a film a couple of years ago by, about Ai Weiwei, the Chinese artist that is most famous for protesting the government. And so it was interesting to see a gov a, another artist that works within the system and isn't always protesting and how he's received internationally because he doesn't protest his own government. And it, and it brought up a good point that when Damien Hirst designed the London Olympics, no one, no one criticized him because people think the British government's fine. But when someone does something for the Chinese government, they're considered a sellout from Western audiences because they're working for an oppressive government. And it interviews a lot of Chinese artists just talking about, like, well, Westerners have no idea what it's like to grow up in China and should really be a little more open-minded. So I thought it was fascinating. Speaking of that, is, is one of the themes you've seen out there this year gun control? We have not focused as much on gun control, and it hasn't been that we're not interested. It's been a lot more that... We're, we are looking for films that we think are going to be exciting for our audience in Oklahoma. And, um, and so we're going to look at all the films that, that we can. But the reality is there's a lot of super political films out here, and that's not why we're here. We're here to find tentpole films that will draw 
positive attention to our festival and bringing people to see the 100 films that we're going to choose. And so it's kind of like Gasland. We're not here to find Gasland because we don't would like that's not that's not what Oklahoma audiences are looking for. What we're looking to do is show you 100 awesome independent films that'll make you think, that'll challenge you, but also that aren't going to just piss everybody off and have them run away and then not support the Oklahoma Film Festival that we've worked so hard to create. That makes sense. So a film like Maggie's Plan that you both really liked, is that something you'll pursue or, or is that a possibility? Yeah, no, we'll pursue it. Um, you know, it's, it's, Eighty percent of the time we'll get a film that we go after, and twenty percent of the time we can't, simply because of release dates. A lot of films are going to be coming out in April, so it'll be for a festival. But we'll absolutely go after um, the film. We know the distributor has a film, and so we'll make inquiries and and we'll do our best to bring it uh, to Oklahoma City. And Dave, I do want to clarify one thing. I was just thinking about what I said. We don't. We our hundred judges at our film. When, if you apply to our festival, it doesn't matter what you're about. If you're one of the top 100 films, you're getting in. But we're not going to go out and invite controversy just for the sake of controversy. You know, so so we don't we don't care what your topic is if you're applying to us. But if we're going to go try to talk you into coming like Bob Marley, we're looking for big, exciting, fun things that a lot of people can be excited about. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited you guys joined us on the phone today. Please be safe. Have fun. Lance McDaniel, Kim Haywood, Dead Center Film Festival. They're enjoying some Sundance. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank Take you, care. Dave. We appreciate you. Take care. All right.